Hey, Caroline in Lafayette, Louisiana. Of course, I'm really dying to say Lafayette, Louisiana. <laughs> At least that's how I want to say it. Anyway, Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com, and I'm going to show you how I cut invisible bifocals with Crizal Anti-Glare Coating for your very own Oakley. What is this thing? I've got it written down somewhere. I hope I took notes. This is the Oakley OX1073. Is my camera good enough to pick that up in the 52 eye size? And the color is 0152, which is polished black. And I've gotten some measurements written on there, which is your pupillary distance and the bifocal height and all this. But since I don't carry Oakley, yes, let me repeat that. I do not carry Oakley. I'm very strong into the Ray-Ban. So Caroline has sent me her own frame and I'm going to put lenses in it for her. And I'm going to take the original demo lenses out. One of them said Oakley on it. And I'm going to put it into my $40,000 edger. Well, this is the tracing compartment. The two tools together are $40,000. And let's go ahead and trace. I hit the green button to start everything. And the stylus is going to pop up and trace the shape of the right lens before moving over and tracing the shape of the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. As soon as this is done, I will get your lenses prepped. Okay. Let's see what the computer prints out. This will be the shape of your lens that pops up. And, of course, that's magnified. This is what it looks like when it's actual size. If I hold the frame over that, that little green circle is the final shape of your lenses. So, let's put in some measurements. You are 31 millimeters in both eyes. So, in that box is your pupillary distance. So, I'm going to type in 31. Hopefully, the camera is good enough to pick that up. The bifocal height is 21. So I'm going to raise that number to 21 and half millimeter things. And of course, when I go over here to the left lens, do the same thing, 31 and 21. All right, let's bring it back to the right. This is going to be the invisible bifocal, so the layout chart. Let's go ahead and magnify everything again. If this were single vision, I'd keep those lines there, but this being the progressive, it's going to give me a different layout chart that I have to do. The blue square, the blue cross, is the geometric center of the lens. Except I'm going to raise the height up just a little bit and I'll show you how I do that. Let me get your lenses ready. I'm going to take them out of the protective sleeves that the lab sends them to me in. Of course your Crizal cleaning cloth comes with that. Let's take everything out, leave my mess right there. Take them out of the plastic sleeves, the little protectant sleeves. And if you notice, each lens has a couple dots on there. Every invisible bifocal has laser marks to show us how to orient the lens. And the first thing that I do is I clean those off because I never trust people at the lab. All right, I'm going to turn that on. You might get some weird psychedelic effects. I'm going to get a tissue and my optical grade acetone. And I'm going to remove the black marks that they put on each lens. I'm going to put my own on there. And I know you can't see that through the thing, but there's a little laser mark. There's two little circles in there. And I'm going to put a red dot in each circle, and I'm going to underline 1-5, which is the strength of your bifocal. I'm going to mark this the left lens. Set that down. I'm going to come back to it. Let's do the same thing for the right. Can you see those black dots magnified through there? Let's clean those off. Let's clean better from underneath the lens. Grab a pen. Where's a pen that writes better? That one wasn't doing well. And let's put a dot in between every circle. And of course on this side it has a little logo etched in there which tells me which brand it is. And I'm using the Ideal Advanced from Essilor. It is the top of the line digital freeform lens that I send out to everyone. So now that those two red dots are on there, you can see my red dots. I'm going to, this is called a layout chart. And your optical center is four millimeters above this 180 line. So I'm going to put a red dot there, which is exactly where your pupil is going to be looking through this lens. Let's do the same thing now for the left lens. Let's put a red dot there. And this pen doesn't want to work. There's a shortage of good red pens. Let's go back to the original. I don't know what the deal is. I keep the caps on, but they never really want to seem to work. At least not when you want them to. They never make you proud when you want them to. Let's turn that off so now that uh, won't give you any psychedelic effects. But I can put that back down on there and we're going to take the right lens 
and I'm going to put it into the layout chart. Those three dots. You can now see the black dots that are on there. And let's see. This is a block. This is what's going to be attached to your lens while it is cutting. So I need a little double-sided adhesive sticker, of which I have one. So I'm going to put this on. Let's get the second one ready. Might as well do them both at the same time. Put that on there. Peel this side away and the bright green pad underneath is the sticky side. I'm going to stick that on there and I'm going to get your optical center lined up there and these two are going to be horizontal on this second line from the bottom. Certain brands of invisible bifocal have different heights and so that line is where these will line up. I will hit this arm. Actually, I will let go of that. Let's go ahead and get everything lined up perfectly. I apologize. This one's going to take a little bit longer than my single vision ones. The invisible bifocal does. So now I'm just going to hit that button, which is going to make that lever arm go and apply the block to your lens. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the left lens. This automatically flips the shape over. I'm go ahead and peel the sticker off. And get everything lined up again. So that goes into the optical center and then these two dots are going to be lined up on that line. And we are good. So I'm going to hit the bar, that button again to make the arm come down and apply the block to your lens. Press that down firmly. Now I come over here, bring the computer back to life. Now that's pulled up the shape of your lens. This is a polycarbonate lens. Maybe you can see the PC right there where the two stars mean I'm going to cut it on the soft cycle, which is a little bit slower. I'm not going to polish your lens, but the actual cutting wheel is over here on the far right. It's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away the lens material until it's done. This little silver button, what, what word would you use to describe that? A little silver dot is actually a magnet. And that's what's going to hold it. This is called the chuck. That's going to hold it in place in the chuck. And I just hit the green arrow again to start. The door will close. The clamp will shut. Making a cool sound effect because it's watertight. The seal is very tight. And now two stylus is going to trace the shape of your lens to make sure that this lens is large enough to cut out. Which it is. But simultaneously it's also measuring the thickness of the lens as it goes around to know exactly where to place the bevel so it will fit best inside the frame. And in just a moment your lens will touch down onto the cutting wheel. And in 20 minutes we will be done. Now because of this, the Cruzol anti-glare coating, it cuts a little bit softer or a little bit slower. This is known as the soft cycle. Without that coating it would start much faster. But your lenses are polycarbonate. And of course, polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is virtually unbreakable. It is bulletproof up to 22 caliber and has both UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin from overexposure, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. The anti-glare coating that it comes with, a Crizol brand, is one of the premium coatings. It comes with a two-year warranty, scratch warranty. It's designed to eliminate glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain. But from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead, fluorescent lights. And it's three features in one. As I mentioned, it's an anti-glare lens. The second feature, it's an anti-reflection lens. If I were to grab a lens that does not have the anti-glare coating, you can see how it reflects the fluorescent lights above me. Your Crizol lens does not do that, so it makes for better eye contact. Essentially, when someone's looking at you, they won't see their reflection in your glasses. But the number one reason people buy it, if someone takes a picture with a flash, you won't see the flash lit up in the lens. You'll see just your eyes. Now, the third feature that I like is that it comes with the best scratch protection in the business. And the Crizol brand comes with a two-year warranty. So if you have any problems in two years, I can replace them for you free of charge. And that's a manufacturer's warranty. I lose no money giving you new lenses. I just have to send the old lenses back for credit. So.
Now the lens is done. In just a moment, the door will open. I will take the lens out. I will hit this button, which will cause the chuck to open. Thank you, Chuck. Of course, as I like to say, Charles, because I don't know the machine well enough to call it Chuck. But I'm just drying your lens off so it's not slippery, and I'm going to apply it into your frame. I'm going to start by tucking it in at the outside corner first, closest to me, using my thumbs. Oops, see, it's still alive. It's trying to squirm away. Using my thumbs, <laughs> it is squirming away. I press down at the nose. Now it snaps in. Now it snaps in. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to hit the L button, which in Latin stands for not right, just like me. And I'm going to hit that green button once I attach this magnet into the chuck, which holds the lens in place. And if you want to see the optical sawdust that was left over from cutting your lens, that is it. And you will have twice as much of that when I am done. So let me hit the green arrow. Just like before the door closes, the clamp comes down to shut. It traces the shape of the left side of the frame this time to make sure it's large enough to fit. And again, measuring the thickness of the lens at every point going around to know where to place it into the frame so you have no edge thickness protruding from the frame, which is perfect for your right lens. So now that your left lens is cutting, I will continue to work on the right. Put my stylus back on the magnet. Pull that off. In fact, let's see how ma the magnets and how everyone's happy. Hey, why ain't that sticking? I guess they're opposites. There we go. Up top, it's sticking. So what is this not doing right? All right, that's another science class. Um, let's grab your paperwork. Head down to my old trusty Marco 1 101 lensometer. I'm going to put the axis wheel at 105 to check to make sure your right lens is cut properly. And you still have one red dot in the center of your lens. I'm going to leave that there. I'm actually going to measure just above that red dot, which is your optical center, also known as the seg height, which is the abbreviation of segment height. So I am reading plus 150. I need to get a better light down here, but we're getting 150, which is exactly halfway between one and two. You have two steps of astigmatism correction which is a minus, we go from plus 150, we subtract minus 50 from 150, and we get plus one, so that is made perfectly. And your prescription reads in your right eye from left to right, plus 150 minus 50 at 105, your left eye plus 150 minus one at 63, and you have a bifocal power, the add, as is known, in addition to what's on top, you have 150. The reason it's an add, if you needed reading glasses, you add these two numbers together, 150 and 150, and you would need a plus three reading glasses. But the unit of measurement in the optical world is called a diopter. And it starts at zero, which we in the business call Plano, which other people call non-prescription, and goes up from there, 0.25, 0.50, 0.75, 1, 1 and a quarter, 150, and so on, up to 20. Well, it goes higher, but you need special equipment to read that. So without your glasses on, everything is much too small in real life. So your glasses will add six steps of magnification to get things to the correct size. So there's two components. One part of your prescription makes everything the correct size for your left and your right eye, your right and your left. You have two steps of astigmatism correction and there is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. It's like saying someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. That is it. It is not a disease. It is not an affliction. But everyone freaks out over that word when they find out they have astigmatism. But you have two steps of correction. Now, this first number gets everything the correct size, as I mentioned. The second number, astigmatism, is what makes sixes and eights, or the letters P and F, look alike. Think of this as the fine-tuned knob. And we, if you had an old-fashioned knob, like a volume knob, we turn that knob to 105. Now, a straight line is 0 to 180. 90 being in the center. We go just past 90 to about 105. Now for your left eye, you still need six steps of correction, but you need an additional four for your astigmatism. But we're going to turn that knob to 63. Now these numbers, these are real fixed values that actually mean something. This last number, 105 for your right eye, 63 for your left could be anywhere from 0 to 180. Technically that's the same number, so let me rephrase that as 1 to 180. And that really doesn't mean anything. These are the first two values you should be concerned about if you really were to care. This one, I don't even care about that number as long as it turns out right on my lensometer. Okay, so let's get your left lens out. Hit the button to open up the chuck. 
Thank you, Chuck. Pull that out of the magnet. Draw your lens off. Where'd that frame go? There it is. There it is. The good old trusty lensometer. So again, I start at the outside corner. I tuck the lens in there first using my thumbs, press down with the nose. That snaps in perfectly. Pull the block off. Let's go back to the lensometer. And what is it again? That's right, the Marco 101. And let me darken that red dot at those for those keeping score at home because the one on the left eye is pretty good. But again, plus 150, minus one at 63. I spin the axis wheel to 63. Hopefully you can see that through the little magnifying glass there. Put the lens in just at that red dot. I like to put my thumb on it so I know it's lined up perfectly. And I'm reading plus 90. No, just kidding. Um, plus 150 again, so that is made correctly. Spin the wheel and I end up... Remember high school algebra, you add opposite signs together, plus 150 and minus 1, but I like to do it in real terms. If you had a dollar fifty and someone borrowed one dollar from you, you would have fifty cents left over. That's where we are. Fifty. We're halfway between zero and one, so that is made correctly. Your pupillary distance is thirty-one in each eye for a combined value of sixty-two. I'm gonna place my PD stick against my thumb on your right lens. And when we get over to the left lens, we're reading sixty-two millimeters, so that is made perfectly. Your bifocal height is 21 millimeters. Let's do this again. So from the middle bottom of the frame, place that there. We're getting 21 millimeters there. We're getting 21 millimeters there. So that is made perfectly. And for those of you who want to know how I came up with those measurements, it came to me in a dream. No, I had her try this frame on since this is her frame. She tried it on, sent me the picture. She told me where she was holding the camera because your eyes converge when you look at something at arm's reach. So I just added a couple millimeters to that. I was able to take that picture, super, you know, bring it up on my computer screen. I enlarged it, I have a touch screen, and I held it up over her picture until it was the same size as the frame. And then I personally just put the dots on there and that's how I was able to measure exactly where it goes. I have never had one come back wrong for that. So all you haters out there, you just learn. And this is the second pair I've made for Caroline. So she liked the first pair so much, she got a second pair from me. So, and of course, while I'm cleaning, this is when I usually tell everyone on the frames that I sell that if you get these in the mail, and chances are these are too loose or too tight, but realistically, the biggest problem you will have, that's because 80% of people have one ear that's higher than the other. So when you try these on and one side is higher than the other, you know why, but that's why 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them to. But I'm gonna get it in standard alignment, which means a three point stance, one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set it on the counter next to my hole and I press down, there is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I take mine off, I press on the counter and they wobble, but they don't right now. Now there's a good chance you may need to get them adjusted so they wobble, but for right now, I make sure they're in standard alignment and make sure the temples overlap perfectly with the same amount of tension on each hinge. If I did need to tighten it, I'd grab my trusty screwdriver, tighten that screw until they were both the same. But that's it. If anyone has any questions about what I can or can't do, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Caroline in Lafayette, Louisiana. I thank you for sending me your own Oakley so I can install the invisible bifocal. How's that for magnification when I hold it up over the letters in the background? But I hope you enjoyed watching as I made an invisible bifocal with Crizal anti-glare coating for your own Oakley. What is this one? I got it written down here somewhere. It is the Oakley OX1073, the 52 eye size. The color is 0152, which is the polished black. And everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.